On this episode of the Globe Sports Corner, the track and field team competing now at a complete level with record-breaking runners and a high level of confidence in the future of their program. The Goshen College baseball team bursts out the gate strong with a pair of home wins. Our reporters have more on what's brought them together as a squad so far this year. And we sit down with the head coach of the Goshen College softball team, Luke Wagner, to learn more about his squad's spring break trip. All that and more is coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. Welcome inside the Globe Studios on the campus of Goshen College. My name is Dante Stan. Thanks for watching the Globe Sports Corner. Exclusive coverage of Maple Leaf Athletics. The past two weeks have been huge for Maple Leaf Athletics. On top of several teams reaching new heights, there's been plenty of individual success with conference-level accolades for several Goshen College athletes. More on that coming up later in the show. But first, we turn to the Goshen College track and field teams and their recent trip to the Crossroads League Tournament Championships. I had the chance to sit down with head coach Sean Vaux and learn a little bit more about the growth that his squad has shown this season and the hopeful eye he has on the future of GC track and field. Nine student athletes, five women and four men, have made their mark on the 2024 indoor track and field season by qualifying for the NAIA Nationals competition. From veterans to newcomers, head coach John Fox is impressed with the special skill set his team has brought to the table. It's good to have student athletes like that that are complimentary to your program and do good things. Um, Transfer-wise, we've had a couple of uh, individuals that came in this year that provide some really good boosts. So, I mean, top to bottom, it's just... It's moving the direction we want to. It's now year two leading the program for Coach Fox, who laid out a special vision for growth back in the spring of 2023. Well, I think we're still early on that path. I mean, we've only had one recruiting class in uh, while I was here, but this current recruiting class that we're working on is already almost at the numbers that we need to for our athletic department. And if everything trends, it could be one of our largest recruiting classes we've ever had for track. The program has lofty long-term recruitment goals that Coach Falk says they likely won't meet for several years, but feels their recent success beyond distance running makes them a more enticing option for bringing in future athletes. In a program that's predominantly been distance-led to have multiple jumpers, multiple sprinters, multiple throwers, people are starting to see us as being a complete team because of those opportunities that they're starting to open doors for, it's allowing us to go out and get more kids and get people more excited. And as those things happen, I mean, I've, I've had a few different parents come up this year and said, wow, it, you know, it, it's nice that it looks like a complete team. One of the younger athletes leading the charge of GC's growth is Daniel Breezy Murphy, a first year who made his mark at GC early, literally setting records for his team right out the gate. Yeah, so um, the plan was to come in here and break the school record which I want a mom coming to take all the school records, so I have one right now. And so hopefully I get the rest by the time I graduate. Through less than two seasons, Coach Falk has managed, with the help of distance coach Rustin Nice, to pull the team in a solid direction, ensuring confidence within the squad with a strong winning mindset in place for the future. I give Coach Falks 100% of the credit, honestly, because he's the one that brought me into this program. He's seen something in me that I didn't see in myself, and he gave me opportunity, and I took it. His communication skills, communicating with the athletes, I feel like that is very important as he, um, this, the program continues to grow and um, being supportive with everybody. Reporting for Globe Sports, I'm Dante Stan. The indoor team has just wrapped up this past Saturday competing at the Crossroads League Track and Field Championships. Both the men and the women finished seventh overall with identical tallies of 49 points. Some of the top highlights included Nelson Kemboy finishing third out of 26 in the 3,000 meter, Aga Alderfer Fisher placing second in the mile, and Daniel Murphy finishing fifth in the 60 meter finals. Congrats to the whole team for competing tough, and good luck in the coming weeks with the NAIA National Tournament starting next week in South Dakota. Coming up, we'll shift to softball with a look at their season so far and a preview of an upcoming road trip down to Melbourne, Florida. Stay with us. You're watching the Globe Sports Corner. Do you dream of a place to belong, to begin your journey, and to believe in something bigger than yourself? A place where you aren't lost in the crowd, but are part of the team. 
communication professionals are in high demand. And Goshen College will give you the tools and hands-on experience to transform your passions into a rewarding career. Begin your career in journalism and be an agent of change at the best college newspaper in the state of Indiana, The Record. Begin a filmmaking career with Five Core Media and work on Emmy-winning productions that propel graduates to Hollywood and beyond. And take our Semester in L.A. program to get a jump start in the industry. Begin your career as a public relations major, one of the fastest growing professions in the country. Begin a rewarding broadcasting career on the air at 91.1 The Globe, the best college radio station in the nation be a dj host tv shows and broadcast live sports believe in yourself and make it possible at goshen college inside the globe studios on the campus of goshen college my name is dante stanton joined now by the head coach of the goshen college softball team luke wagner coach thanks for joining me in the studio how you doing today i'm doing great thanks for having me you guys do a great job thanks I appreciate you having uh, coming in. Uh, I want to talk about this big start to the season that you've had. Sure. Three and one, great yeah. start, uh, including a win over receiving votes St. Francis, Illinois. What's it been like getting everybody back out on the field? Yeah, it's been it's been fantastic, super exciting. A lot of great energy coming in from last season. Um, you know, we brought everybody back, added a few new freshmen, um, which have given us some new energy as well. But hopefully. Um, we're able to live up to, to some of the expectations, some of the standards, some of the goals that we've set for ourselves this year. And so far, um, so good. We're playing good softball. Uh, we continue to grow. And so that's, that's kind of the goal is to continue to get better one day at a time. And I think we're doing that. You've got the Space Coast Spring Games down in Melbourne, Florida, the next 10 games after this. What's preparation like for a really long road trip like that that's yeah. lasting almost a week? Yeah, prep work for that is crazy. Um, you know, it's... <clears throat> it's difficult, but it's fun because you get to play so many different teams. Mm -hmm. um, the difficult part is that you are playing so many different teams. So there's there's eight different scouts that go into this week, and you can't really scout too early in the season because they haven't done anything yet. And so you have to wait literally until the week before you go down there and then try to really kind of just jump in and see, well, give me a little snapshot of what every single team is doing, what they're capable of, and then – then we have to come up with a way to try to combat what they do well and then try to uh, push what we do well. And so certainly stressful, but certainly a lot of fun. We like the challenge. It's great playing teams from all over the country. It's great playing teams from all over the you know, different leagues, which will give us a, a really good prep work for our conference, which is very challenging. Um, so that's the goal. So if we can do that, you know, the, the stress and the anxiety leading up to that week is worth it. You mentioned conference. Uh, you've got 11 days off once that ends, and then you go straight into a doubleheader with Bethel yeah. here at home. So how prepared do you feel you need to be once you hit conference season 11 days again after that long road trip ends? Yeah, I, I think we're in a really good spot. I you know, kind of talked to the girls, and, and you had me, you were gracious enough to have me on the show last year about this time, and we talked about um, I like to kind of try to split the season into – into three manageable pieces. And mm -hmm. so we have, you know, the, the pre-Florida Florida kind of trip or, or our spots where we try to, to cue in on some things. And then we have the Florida trip where we really try to get a bunch of reps, get ourselves ready for a conference. And then, you know, then, then we have the conference season. And that's that's everything. That That's, that's what we put all of our weight on. And so um, having the 11 days off isn't the worst thing in the world. I think we're going to learn a bunch down in Florida. I think we're going to come back with, probably some pretty sore athletes. And so having a couple of days off there isn't going to be the worst thing in the world. Um, and then having a couple extra days to get a prep for, for a good Bethel team will be, will be helpful. And so, yeah, I think, I think the timing is, is perfect for us. I think, um, you know, the way it's set up is really advantageous to us. So, so we like it. I want to know a little bit more about this Florida trip. I mean, it's a great opportunity, I imagine, for the athletes to bond a little bit. Yeah. How, how did you see that last year come together? Yeah, I thought last year was amazing. Last year's trip, I think, was probably the most important part of our season. Um, more important than actually playing some of the games was mm -hmm. the fact that, just as you said, the team was able to, to see each other in a different light and to learn a little bit more about each other and to take the next step in trying to become more like a family unit, less like you know, 20 players showing up to play the same game, but one unit showing up to play the same game. And so I thought last year's trip, um, just being able to break the girls into two houses and, and allow them to kind of bond and, and forge better chemistry was huge. And then this year, um, 
fortunate enough to find one house to house the entire team. And so that'll be something new. But then again, we'll, we'll introduce a lot of, of experiences for people to learn a lot more about each other on a little bit deeper level than, oh, that's our shortstop. Oh, that's our center field or whatever the case may be. And so, yeah, it, it, the, the better chemistry, the closer you can get together as, as one single unit, the better you're going to be. And so I, I think this Florida trip and like you said, the off the field stuff is almost more important than the on the field stuff, especially before we begin a really tough conference slate. We know some of the stars of this team from a statistical standpoint. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of big returners this mm -hmm. year. Uh, talk to me some about some of these newer players, some of these first years or transfers that have really made an impact on your team so far. Who stands out? Yeah, I think, well, right off the bat, we only had two freshmen come in, but both freshmen have come in and contributed right away. And mm -hmm. so that's been something that's been really nice. Both Rachel Cates has been able to come in and do a really nice job at the plate with the bat. And um, Cameron Barrows has been a, a fantastic kind of staple for us in, in the circle right now. And so that's helped us out tremendously. Um, but then you also see individuals that are stepping up just coming back from, from last season to this season, making big strides, knowing the expectations and being able to take their game kind of to the next level. And so I think all the way around, um, we've certainly gotten better. We haven't gotten stagnant, which is one of the, the biggest fears when you have a team that doesn't have a huge amount of turnover is will people get complacent? And we haven't. And so that's been super, super exciting for me because that shows that, that we're pushing the right things and that the girls are – are taking ownership of what they want their experience to be, which is ultimately what we want to see. Excited to see how this team moves forward. And, of course, the big road trip coming up. Good luck uh, as you hit the road. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. When we come back, we stay on the diamond but shift to baseball and a start to their home season. That's next on the Globe Sports Corner. Goshen students enjoy an amazing record of success. What's the secret? It starts with hands-on learning experiences. Whether it's a service project in Peru, a sustainability semester at our environmental learning center, or broadcasting for our award-winning radio station, it adds up to life-changing perspectives and real-world skill development that makes a difference to future employers. And it's all available at a campus that makes everyone feel at home. Come hang out with us and see for yourself. Schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. When you think of the month of February, you don't typically think of the baseball season starting, but the Maple Leafs have hit the ground running with their home opener last Wednesday and are already off to a hot start. The Goshen College baseball team had their first home games on February 14th against Trinity Christian College. They took both wins in that series, and for head coach Brad Stoltzfus, these are his first home wins in the new leadership role. First off, just playing a home game on our field on February 14th, I don't know if that's ever been done. Um, in terms of getting on our field that early in the season. So that alone was a win of the day. Now with their home record being 2-0 and and their overall being 4-4, four and four, this is an improvement from the year before when they were 0-6 around this time in the season. The biggest thing that changed from last year to now is the team dynamic. Senior pitcher Connor Daniel says the connectivity is based around their new passion. Well, I, I feel like we all bring like a really like great energy and vibe to the field every day we come. and. Yeah, just like, um, also Brad's awesome. He's coming in wanting us to win, and he we want to win for him, and yeah, it's a great thing. And a lot of the younger guys are stepping up for us, and older guys too. And Yeah, we all have a really good vibe going in right now. Overall, the team has brought forward a whole new aura, and with the early success they didn't see in 2023, it's hard not to notice the work they are putting in behind the scenes. Junior infielder Trent Zellett acknowledges the factors to their accomplishments. I think the biggest thing that I've seen uh, changing from this year to last is uh, kind of overall team wins. I think this year um, the wins that we have gotten have been really good uh, wins on both sides of the ball, not just offense or defense, um, but really just kind of connecting well and uh, being able to get good wins um, as a whole team rather than just one side. Coach Stoltzfus and the team still have a long season ahead of them with wins and losses along the way. But as they push through any adversity they face, they will still have their goal and motto in place. One, I mean, one thing we focus on is being intentional about everything we do. Everything we do, there's a reason, there's a focus, there's an intentionality. Reporting for Globe Sports, I'm Liliana Herrera. The baseball team will be back in action this coming Friday.
Now let's turn to our Everett Student Athlete of the Week, one of those individual stars on the baseball team that's coming on strong early in the season. Junior Joseph Serta has been named the Athlete of the Week after going 5 for 7 at the plate in Goshen Sweep over Trinity Christian. Right now, Serta leads the Crossroads League in batting average at 556, is tied for the league lead in hits with 13, tied for first in home runs with two, and is at the top in doubles with five. Great start to the season for the Leafs. Hope that they're able to keep it up moving forward. And we've got some more awards to highlight. It was announced Monday that sophomore Bianca Diamond has earned her second straight Crossroads League Softball Player of the Week honor. Diamond is hitting 538 on the season so far with three runs, seven RBIs, and currently 4 for 4 on stolen base attempts. She's a big reason why this Maple Leaf squad jumped out to a 3 and 1 record. Congrats to Bianca on another accolade. When we return, Liliana Herrera joins us in studio to go over our Maple Leaf Minute. That's coming up next on the Globe Sports Corner. Goshen College, everyone's at home here. Students from around the world and down the street find inspiration and lifelong friends in our unique supportive community, right here in Northern Indiana. Cutting edge academics, real world learning and small personalized classes make the difference. All surrounded by world class culture and championship sports. Most importantly, it all leads to a record of amazing outcomes in diverse fields of study. From pre-med to social work, broadcasting to accounting, schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Steps back in, 2-1 the count, close about to wind up, Van Scooter 60 feet away, here is the pitch, and that is driven deep, deep to center field, Elva Cloud has done it, Van Scooter crosses the plate, that is a grand slam home run for the Leafs, bottom of the first, Elva McLeod hit that with everything she had, close looks real disappointed, but that is four runs for the Maple that was our Globe Highlight of the Week. Mike Morell on the call there and a grand slam from a softball matchup this past week right here on the campus of Goshen College. Let's turn now to the week ahead and look at our Maple Leaf Minute with Globe Sports reporter Liliana Herrera in studio. Lily. Thanks, Dante. Maple Leaf Athletics takes a break today, but the games pick right back up Friday and into Saturday. The weekend kicks off Friday with the baseball team traveling down to Columbia, Kentucky to take the field against the Blue Raiders of Lindsey Wilson College. The first pitch will be thrown at 4 p.m. Bringing it back to Goshen, the men's volleyball team will be at home Friday night in the Ruth Gunning Gymnasium. The men will be taking the court with Siena Heights University, and the first serve will be at 7 p.m. This matchup will be featured on 91.1 The Globe, the Globe Radio app, and globeradio.org with live play-by-play -play coverage and on goleafs.net slash live. Saturday hosts three matchups starting with a baseball doubleheader against Lindsey Wilson College. The first game takes place at 1 p.m., and the second game will follow shortly after. The men's and women's basketball team have their senior night on Saturday along with games in the Ruth Gunnan against Huntington University. The women take on the Foresters at 1 p.m. and the men follow after at 3. The last matchup for the weekend will be a home matchup for the men's volleyball team. They'll be facing off against Lawrence Tech and the first serve is set to take place at 7 p.m. As always, good luck athletes and go Leafs. Thanks, Lily. That's going to do it for this episode of the Globe Sports Corner. Be sure to check out our social media pages. It's Facebook, Instagram, and the X app, all at 91.1 The Globe. Also, check out our content online at globeradio.org and the Globe Radio app for live sportscasts. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in two weeks for more exclusive coverage of Maple Leaf Athletics.